my cause. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. It's you and me. I know it's my destiny. Pokemon. Oh, you're my best friend. In a world we must defend. Pokemon, you teach me and I'll teach you. Pokemon is a collectible trading card game. That means there's cards you collect, kind of like baseball cards. Then you make up your team of all different players called Pokemon. Your Pokemon will fight against your friend's Pokemon, and whoever wins the most battles will win the game. We'll show you how the cards work, the object of the game, even a little strategy. Then we'll have you arrange the cards in a certain order so we can play Pokemon together, because following along is probably the fastest way to learn. Okay, all right, all right, settle down, parents, settle down. It's time to begin. Okay, uh, I'm Jimmy, and I'll be your instructor. Uh, and in this class, we're going to learn how to play Pokemon. Uh, yes, question. Can we trade Pokemon cards in class? Now, now, I know trading is fun, but that's not why we're here. We're here to learn to play Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trading Pokemon cards for a long time, and I almost have all of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. That's, that's, that's great. But see, in this class, we will learn to use those cards to play Pokemon. Um, yeah. Is it a good deal to trade a, a Violet Plume for a Nidoqueen? Queen? Well... It, it, it could be, it could be. Depends, actually. Th th that's not the point. Look, you guys like to collect Pokemon cards, right? Yeah. They're all different, right? Yeah. yeah. Some have foil, some don't. Right. See, that's important, because you make your deck from the cards you collect. It's, it, it's kind of like your team. What? So it's good to collect the foil cards, right? Okay, uh, you know what? Just, just trade. <laughs> well, we'll pick this up later. There are four types of cards, and we'll tell you about each kind. First, let's talk about the basic Pokemon cards. See, every Pokemon is different. Each has different attacks, strengths, and weaknesses. This is where you find the name of the Pokemon. Just above the name is where it tells you if the Pokemon is a basic Pokemon or an evolution Pokemon. In this case, Machop is a basic Pokemon. Here is the Pokemon's attack, or what it can do to another Pokemon in battle. Up here you find the hit points. Hit points are the amount of damage your Pokemon can take before it is knocked out. Check out all your different Pokemon cards. Some are strong attackers and some are hard to knock out. Because you know, that's kind of the way it is in life. My name is Brian, and I'm 11 years old. I think Pokemon's, Pokemon's a lot like baseball, because, because they both have trading cards. And it's like soccer, because they both have leagues. And it's like bowling. Nah, there's nothing like bowling. My name is Kelly and I'm eight years old. I like to play in the playground and play Pokemon. I usually play Pokemon after school. It's kind of fun. I like to win. I can beat anybody on my street, even the 14-year-olds. Some teenagers, they throw the best tantrums. Teenagers. They're so immature. Pokemon need energy to battle. Some need grass, others need fire, water, lightning, psychic, or fire. There are six different types of energy, and you've got to use the right kind to power your Pokemon. On each card right next to the attack, it tells you what kind of energy you need to attach to your Pokemon. In this example, Machop needs just one fighting energy to do a low kick. On the other hand, Machoke needs two fighting energy plus one other energy card of any type. This colorless symbol means you can use any type of energy you want. It's kind of an energy wild card. 
if you know what I mean. Everybody take your seat. Let's get started. Okay, everybody settle down. Settle down. Settle down. All right, it's time to begin. Now that everybody have a good break? Okay, great. Now, in order to play Pokemon, you need... What? Yes, during the break, I traded for a Vaporeon. Oh. Everybody, everybody hands down, hands down, hands down. I, I just won. You too. All right, okay. Now, in here class, we're going to learn to play Pokemon because it is a fun game that will challenge your mind. I, I just won. There are two players at a time. There are two players at a time, each with a deck of 60 cards. Now, there are four types of cards. Basic Pokemon, Evolved Pokemon, Energy Cards, and Trainer Cards. Now, everybody got that? Good. Damage counters help count damage. Each damage counter is worth 10 damage points. So, if your Pokemon has five damage counters on it, then it has 50 damage. If it has four damage counters, that's 40 damage. Three is 30, and two is 90. I'm kidding about the 90. <laughs> They're always worth 10 points each. Trainer cards are cool because they can really change the game. Some trainers let you pick more cards for your hand. Some let you add or remove damage counters. And some help you get more energy. There are a lot of them, and they all do different things. Even though trainer cards can only be played once, they can change your life forever. My name is Sean, and I'm 11 years old. Playing Pokemon has taught me some really, really important things about life. Well, I've learned that uh, cheaters never prosper. It's nice to take turns. You got to play by the rules. Things like never give up. Hello? Hello? Patience is a virtue. And always eat your vegetables. Actually, it was my mom who taught me the last one. My name's Heather, and I'm 13 years old. I think riding horses is really fun. Um, I think I could probably teach a lot of kids to ride, and I could probably teach a lot of kids to play Pokemon. I play Pokemon every Thursday after school and over the weekends. I've been riding horses for about nine years. My favorite Pokemon card is Ponyta. The grossest part about horses is cleaning out their stall. To get the horse smell off, I have to go home and take a shower and scrub my body, put on clean clothes. When I clean my horse, I pick his hooves with a hoof pick to make sure they're clean, and I brush his mane and I brush his tail with a comb, and then I go out. The difference between Pokemon cards and horses is that Pokemon cards are a lot easier to clean up. Now it's time to arrange the cards so we can play a game together. First, let's get player A set up. The cards on top of your deck should be in the following order. Five water energies, star you, three more water energies, Golding, then two more water energies, Sea King, Bill, Dratini, and finally, three more water energies. Don't worry about the order after that. Player B, the first cards on top of your deck should be four fighting energies, then Diglett, two fighting energies, switch, fighting energy, Machop, then two fighting energies, Machop, Machoke, two more fighting energies, and finally a Pokédex. You teach me and I'll teach you. My name is Suzanne and I am your instructor. This is parent A and this is parent B. Now that your decks are in the correct order, I'm going to teach them and you how to play a game. Pokemon is a smart game, but I think even parents can learn how to play. <laughs> All right, the goal of the game is to collect six prize cards. But to simplify this game, we're only going to use three prize cards, which are placed at the start of the game right over here. So every time your Pokemon knocks out your friend's Pokemon, you get one of these prizes. You can't look at the prize cards until you win one, and the first player to get them all wins the game. 
Before the game begins, each player draws a hand of seven cards and leaves the rest of the deck face down right here. When you discard, you'll leave the cards right here. Next, each player chooses a basic Pokemon from their hand and places it face down in front of them. Since we're just starting, I suggest player A choose Staryu and parent B. Pretty good hand, huh? Is it even wild? No. Uh, just choose Machop. Each player has an active Pokemon that they put out front. Active Pokemon are the ones that do battle. You can also have up to five other Pokemon on the bench. The Pokemon on your bench go below. In baseball terms, it's kind of like being on deck. The good news is that you can add energy or evolve the active Pokemon, or the ones on your bench. The bad news is that if your active Pokemon gets knocked out, and you don't have another Pokemon waiting on your bench, you lose the game. Oh, uh, and by the way, losing, it's not a good thing. Okay, now both of you flip over your active Pokemon cards. To start, player A, draw a card from the top of your deck. It should be a water energy. Place Goldeen on one of the bench slots on your play mat. It doesn't matter which one. Now take one of the water energy cards and place it underneath Staryu. And be sure to leave a little exposed so your opponent can see it too. So Staryu has one attack called Slap. That does 20 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, so go ahead and attack Pyrene. Star you slap. You see the number to the right of the attack name? All right, well, Star you just did 20 damage to Machop. So go ahead and put two damage counters on Machop, because each counter represents 10 points. 10, 20, feel the pain. OK, attacking is always the last step of your turn, so you're done for now, Parent A. Parent B, you ready? Yeah. All right, draw a card. Place it in your hand. It should be a fighting energy. Play Diglett onto the bench. Any slot's fine. Anywhere. There. Right there. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Larry, doesn't matter. Okay. <clears throat> now, attach a fighting energy to uh, Machop. And again, leave a little exposed so your opponent can see it. All right, Machop only has one attack, Low Kick, which needs one fighting energy, so tell Perrine you're attacking. Machop, Low Kick. You're really catching on there. Low Kick does 20 damage, so Parent B plays two damage counters on Staryu. 10 and 20. All right, Perrine, it's back to you. Draw a card. Now your active Pokemon Staryu has 20 damage on it. It only takes 40 damage to knock it out. You're going to want to avoid this problem by having Staryu retreat. Are you sure? I'm sure. If your active Pokemon has a lot of damage counters on it, you might want to protect it by switching it with one of the other Pokemon on your bench. Sometimes there's a cause to retreat and sometimes there isn't. Look in the lower right-hand corner of the card. If there's a cause to retreat, that's where you'll find it. To retreat your Pokemon, discard as many energy cards as there are energy symbols. In this case, it costs one energy card to retreat Staryu. Notice the retreat symbol is colorless, which means you can pay with any type of energy card. When you remove energy cards, put them in the discard pile. By the way, the retreating Pokemon keeps its damaged counters and the remaining energy cards. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's only fair. All right, so you've switched Staryu with Golding from the bench. Now Golding is your active Pokemon. You're allowed to use one energy card per turn, so now's a good time to put one under Golding. Okay. Now you can attack using Golding's horn attack. Time for a Pokemon battle. Golding, go. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What? That's how you play the game. You know what? Just put another damage counter on the top, and you're done. All right, Parent B, draw a card. You sank my Pokemon. <laughs> Fighting energy, right? Yeah. All right, that's good. Now, usually you'd want to attach your energy card to your active Pokemon, but Machop doesn't need extra energy. So instead, attach the energy card to your bench Diglett. All right, and now you're ready to attack using Low Kick. Go Machop, go Machop, go Machop, go! Oh. Okay. Go, Macha. You done? Yeah. 
Now just put two damage counters on Goldie. Now don't panic, Perrine, okay? You're gonna evolve Goldine into Seeking, but first draw a card. Now evolve Goldine by putting Seeking directly on top. There are three levels of Pokemon cards. Basic, Stage 1 Evolution, and Stage 2 Evolution. In the same spot on the Pokemon card where it says, Basic Pokemon, you'll find it'll say something like, Stage 1 evolves from, and then the name of the Basic Pokemon. By evolving your Pokemon, they take on a stronger, more powerful form. You can evolve your active Pokemon, or any of the other Pokemon on your bench. When a Pokemon evolves, it keeps all of its energy cards attached to it, as well as any damage counters. You can only evolve a Pokemon that is already in play. You can't just put down a basic Pokemon and then immediately evolve it. You'll just have to wait for another turn to do that. Alright, so Perine, attach a water energy card and attack using Waterfall. All right, now Waterfall Attack requires Seeking to have at least one Water Energy and another Energy of any color. Seeking, Waterfall now. Congratulations, your attack just did 30 damage to Machop for your first Pokemon Knockout. Yeah. All right, Player B, take Machop, put it face up in the discard pile along with the Energy card attached to it. And the counters go back in the pile. But as for you, as a reward, Perrin A, you can take one of your prizes and put it in your hand. <laughs> no, no, see, no. See, your cards are your cards. His are his. Actually, what's his is mine. Okay, but for the game, <laughs> you just take the cards on your side of the table. Okay, everybody keeps their own cards. Don't worry, Parent B. The game's just getting started. First, replace your knocked out Pokemon with one from the bench. Since you only have one choice, move Diglett and the attached energy card to the space marked active Pokemon. All right, draw a card. Place the Machop you just drew onto the bench along with the fighting energy card. Now take a look at Diglett. It only has 30 hit points on it and it's in danger of being knocked out by seeking this next turn. See, some Pokemon have a retreat cost, but Diglett doesn't. You can return it for free. So, you should switch Diglett with Machop and attack using a low kick. As a great general once said, sometimes you have to retreat to advance. <laughs> okay, just attack. Yeah. In any case, uh, that did 20 damage. Excellent work, Parent B. Put two damage counters on Seeking and your turn is over. All right, Parent A, draw a card. Okay, that's a trainer called Bill. That's good. You might as well use it now. Show the card to Parent B and do what it says. It says draw two cards. Those go in your hand and the trainer card, of course, goes into the discard pile. Now, you don't really need to use an extra energy, but oh look, you got your teeny. Put your teeny on the bench and attach an energy card to it. Attack with Seeking and put 30 damage on Machop. Sorry, honey. It's okay. Just a game. Alright, now your turn's over, Player A. Alright, Parent B. Every turn starts by drawing a card. Hmm, Machoke. That's an evolution card. Now, you could play it on top of Machop, but you wouldn't have enough energy to attack this turn. I think Machop's up to it. No. You see, Machoke needs at least three energy, and Machop only has one energy right now. I suggest you save Machoke for later and switch Machop with Diglett. You see, you have a trainer card called Switch. Basically, that lets you switch your active Pokemon with one from your bench. Now you could do the same thing by retreating Machop, but then you'd have to discard an energy card. The trainer saves you from having to pay for the retreat. Attach a fighting energy to your Diglett. Now attack with the Mud Slap. I was gonna do that. That attack just did 30 damage to Seeking. That's a total of 70 damage, which is enough to knock out Seeking. Congratulations, Parrot B. You just defeated your first Pokemon. It'll be a Pokemon Master is my destiny. <laughs> just pick up a prize card and put it in your hand. Okay, player A. Take everything attached to Seeking and put it in the discard pile, and the counters go back too. Next, move Jutini from the bench up to the active Pokemon space. Now draw a card. Jutini only needs one energy, so attach it to Star You instead. Then I attack using Pound. Good, you're catching on. Put one damage counter on Diglett, and your turn is over. Okay, Parent B, draw a card. All right, now attack with the Mud Slap. It's time for a Pokemon battle. 
30 damage to Dratini. Oh, yeah. Okay, so after five rounds, player B has one prize card and player A also has one prize card. Congratulations, you know, a little practice and you two might just become Pokemon Masters. Might be a Pokemon Master, might be my destiny. I want to be the best there ever was. <laughs> okay, you know, I think you two can play on your own now. Should we get the kids? Remember, when it's your turn, you can do any one of the following. First, draw a card. Have fun. Put a basic Pokemon into play. Have fun. Evolve a Pokemon. Have fun. Attach an energy card. Have fun. Play a trainer card. Have fun. Retreat your active Pokemon. Have fun. And last, attack with your active Pokemon. Have fun. <laughs> Okay, so when is it a good time to retreat a Pokemon card? Anyone? Mr. Gage. But it has a lot of damage counters on it. <laughs> yes. Yes, very, very good. Yes, yes, Mr. Lee. When it has a lot of damage counters on it. Okay, that, that would also be correct. Anyway, uh, true or false? I should always evolve my Pokemon as fast as I can. Mr. Potter. Can we trade Pokemon cards now? Sure. <laughs> my name's Miles. I think of myself as a Pokemon philosopher. After all, the game is like life. There's a time to attack and a time to retreat. There's a time for basics and a time to evolve. Oh, and there's a time to win, which is pretty much always. My name is Vanessa and I'm 10 years old. I like things that are wet, like water. I like to swim. I think in a past life, I was a fish. I'm at home in the water. Sometimes my fingers get really wrinkly. When I'm on Earth, I like to play Pokemon. Every deck I make has water energy. Water fall attack! Water energy is the best. Part of the fun of Pokemon is playing with different decks. Theme decks are already put together, and each one has a different strategy. The Grass Chopper deck lets you mow over everyone in your way with grass and fighting Pokemon. The Hot Water deck will bring your opponents to a quick boil with water and fire Pokemon. The Lightning Bug deck uses grass and lightning Pokemon to zap your opponents. And the Psych Out deck combines psychic and water attacks to give your opponents that sinking feeling. Of course, you can always get the 11 card booster pack to modify any deck. Um, uh, to protect the world from, from infestation. Devastation. Unite all the peoples within our, in our nation. To denounce the, to pronounce the, um, to denounce the, um, <laughs> evil of truth and truth and love. To, I can't remember. <laughs> to expand our, extend our reach to the stars we love. Uh, to reach up to the stars above. Just then I'll reach the stars above. Jamie, Jimmy, um, Bessie and Dave, Jesse and James, Jesse, James, Rocket, Dave, Team, Team Rocket, blasting off every night at the speed of light and go really fast. That's all I know. Super surrender now or prepare to light, fight. Um, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, at least you can remember to get the new Team Rocket deck. Now that you know how to play Pokemon, the best way to train is to join a league. Kids from all over challenge each other to see who's the greatest Pokemon master of all. So, if you're interested in joining, visit our website or ask for information where they sell Pokemon cards. 
You can make friends or badges and win valuable prizes. It's a great way to improve your skills and make sure you'll become the best there ever was. Pokemon Master Trainer! Yes, I think I am. Then join the Pokemon Trading Card Game League. You'll do awesome activities, learn wicked strategies, earn killer badges, and meet new friends as you begin your journey to become a Pokemon Master Trainer. To find out more about the Pokemon Trading Card Game League, log on to wizards.com. Go forth and be a master.